So we're hot off the heels from another YCS, and we have the deck breakdowns. We have Snake Eyes and Fire King, and just pure Snake Eyes from what it looks from what it looks like. Voiceless Voice was five out of fifty, I believe. So what is that like? Not is that that's about ten percent, right? Uh, quick math, maybe. And then the rest, what? Well, one sinful spoils with rescue ways. That's actually shocking to be honest, because wasn't that doing a lot of work not that long ago? And then we of course have the annoying flu under East player and the purely the the uh what's it called? Uh the furries are trying to make a comeback, but we're saying, nah, man, stay in the closet. So you think, right? We have all these fire decks. Obviously, fire cards should be doing really good in the market, right? Well, Mm, maybe, but not really. So we have Snake Eyes Poplar. This card has been going down a lot. I mean, holy shit, man. $32 at its peak from $74, which is pre-sales. Pre-sales aren't really real, guys. Like, they're they're inflated. So I would say about around $48. I remember selling a couple copies of this for $48, and that was uh, like three weeks ago, two weeks ago, maybe. So we have a steady decline of a very good and needed, much needed in Snake Eyes card, fire card that is going to the bargain bin, guys. We also have Promethean Princess, same thing, fire going to the bargain bin. What is going on here, guys? Bonfire, what? what's going on? 119? Wasn't this supposed to be like really expensive? People were bitching. Didn't I say it was gonna reach 120 and then go down? Dude, my prediction. Are you guys, how are you guys not listening to me? I I hit it on the head. Now I'm not I'm not some kind of crazy witch person. The reason I know these things is because there's a ceiling for everything, and it, it it's just not just because a deck is really good doesn't mean people want to play it uh, with it. It also doesn't mean that it's not going to be. Uh, overtaken at some point and or even just broken entirely due to konami's uh ban list that should be coming out relatively soon i'm assuming so what are people buying right we have low the prayers of voiceless voice this card has maintained value since release and the thing about it is voiceless voice still has it's still not in full power we still haven't gotten everything from this archetype right and it's seeing a decent amount of people interested in it. I mean, 71 listings as a secret rare, I guess. It's, 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 secret rares are obviously harder to get. But, I mean, $72, and it has been r sitting at this for the longest time. We are also seeing, guys. I mean, I've been, I, I've told you guys about this. Diviner of the Herald was disappearing off the market. It got relisted. So, you know, some of you guys have a second chance, but we've seen, we, we have been seeing really good track records. I predicted this was, would be $40, so we'll see if we had, if I had another one on the head. We'll see, we'll see. All right, so moving on, we have Battles of Legend Chapter 1, and as predicted, this set has not been doing the greatest, man. I mean, of course, the Ubel stuff is doing work because... I mean, we'll get to it, but the Ubel meta might actually be a thing. I mean, I don't think it'll be tier one. Maybe it'll be tier one, actually. But, you know, I, I'm kind of pessimistic because usually, uh, what, what would you call anime-based decks don't do that well, right? Even if you expect them to do well, they usually don't do that well in the meta. It's just the way it goes. So that's why I'm kind of basing it off past trends that Ubel isn't going to be, you know, a top competitor. But from the effects, and we have gotten new Ubel stuff teased from the OCG that will make the archetype a little bit better, actually. More interactions on your opponent's turn, more interruptions. It's actually going to be nutty, guys. Uh, it might actually be a very competitive deck. And as such, of course, people are anticipating it. 945 for the Ubel Ultra Rare. Absolute to zero, which had like very, very few reprints. Especially as a high rarity secret rare, of course, is going to be 
expensive on release. Number 90 that was very expensive before this release. I think it only had two printings and the printing that was uh, its previous printing essentially was like $50, $60, something like that for the longest time again because no reprints. But besides the cards that haven't gotten reprints or, you know, the fan favorites like Stratos or even to my shock, number 39 Utopia, Everything else in the set is just hot garbage. I mean, if you buy a box, which is 15 bucks, and you don't pull a U-Bell or one of the cheese secret rare rares, which you only get one of, and there's only three packs per little box here, which you can only pull like three times two. You can only get six ultra rares. The odds are against you from pulling the the promo, definitely, and U-Bell or any specific ultra rare uh, also, definitely. So it, it's just, it sucks. I, I think Konami has a lot of work to do in sets like this, but I at least warn you guys if you watch the video to not buy this. And really, you shouldn't be unless you're trying to have some fun because, you know, it is fun to open up stuff like this. You get a die, you get a promo, and then you get some fan favorites like you, Bell, in higher rarity. It's real, it's a good time. However, don't buy this. Everything else, everything here is is just really cheap garbage that you can buy if you really need it and, and singles. And I mean, other than that, other than me trying to warn you guys again of <laughs> avoiding this set, what what can we actually look at for uh, profit here? Right. You know, I was saying that number thirty nine Utopia in this cool i don't i don't like this but you know some of you guys do this astral uh form or rarity i it might see a a, a more run up because i haven't seen a lot of people pull it there's 10 listings and i mean you can see here if you got in on the pre-sales holy man that is that is definitely where you wanted to be because you you you've like 60 x your 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 uh actually maybe now 30 it might be 30 x your investment if you bought it in around three three bucks so goddamn you guys knew what you were doing but it, it it all depends on how crazy people are and I haven't really seen a lot of stuff for Utopia like Utopia stuff doesn't really do that well we've seen stuff in the past actually with Utopia in particular where it's higher rarity stuff, but it doesn't really move. Oh man, this the release of the ultra rare really hit the secret rare, or was this a? I think it was a starlight actually. It hit it like a like a brig, man. It, it sunk for sure. It's one of the cheaper quarter century rares from the uh, twenty two tins or twenty twenty three tins. I should say. So I think that's a better pickup, to be honest, unless you really do like and dig that astral rarity, which, I, again, I don't know why you would. And I know there's also a collector rare, yes, right here from King's Court, which is five whole dollars, eight dollars. I mean, there's better stuff, in my opinion. The Utopia stuff in general, it's not hype. It doesn't get a lot of people excited, right? Especially if it's higher rarity or I guess even if it is high rarity. But uh, yeah, going back to chapter one, I don't really see a lot of investment potential currently. If I'm going to be completely honest, the Ubel stuff maybe. But I mean, it's already kind of expensive at $7. I think it actually went down since... Uh, since we went away from here, I feel like a lot of this stuff is already either too expensive or just not worth investing in this set, to be completely honest. I don't have any leeway in that set. However, in this set, holy shit, the 2022 tins are seeing a resurgence. Like I said, Diviner of the Herald was going up in value because a lot of the ritual stuff coming out. And uh, it's, I mean, it's also a good card in general. And uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon has also kind of seen some stuff since the the release of of this set. Essentially, a twenty dollar uh, card from a tin ain't bad. Like these tins for one hundred twenty seven dollars ain't bad. It's twenty dollars more than what a, a case of Battles of Legend Chapter One would be. And you would get way more value out of this. Like, chances are you're not going to be pulling the Astral Utopia. But you're probably going to pull one Dragoon, at least one Diviner, and then one Crossout Designator. That's already 20, 20 times 3, right? 60 bucks. And then we also have the Underworld Goddess, which hasn't seen the run-up that I'm expecting. Because there is another Underworld Goddess coming out. And this is also assuming 
that we don't get these cards reprinted in the rarity collection, which we probably will. I do think we're going to get Cross Out Designator and Diviner of the Herald in the next rarity collection. It just kind of makes sense to me. Uh, also, we don't have any other reprint sets since or until then, unless I'm mistaken. So uh, you're relatively safe until the rarity collection, and if the rarity collection doesn't reprint them, then holy shit, these cards are going to the moon, man. I really do think this Diviner of the Herald has the $40 potential. Other stuff like uh, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer has had a decent come up recently. And, I mean, it's it's a decent card, right? The DPE package is still doing stuff. 122 listings. I still do think a lot of these cards are going to be printed in the rarity collection. Again, I'm, I'm stressing that, guys. I do think even the Destroyer Phoenix guy has a very strong potential of the rarity collection. The rarity collection is going to nuke a lot of these prices. I do have a hard... A very strong feeling about that. Anyways, other stuff in this set. I do. Th I, I feel. I felt strongly about the Dark Magician Girl. However, the OCG just got a new Dark Magician Girl uh, artwork, so this one is probably going to go down in price. If I'm going to be completely honest, although this is probably one of the best artworks, if not the best current TCG artwork of the Dark Magician Girl. So you need it. Pick it up. Anyways, Phantom Darkness, we've already talked about low, 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 low. Ubel, of course, went up to $20, and then it went down because people started restocking, which is expected. However, man, the, this is an insane uh, investment potential. Again, if Ubel does stuff, which probably will, and again, you got to consider that the ban list is coming, then this card will be like a $40 ultra rare all, like very easily right it's a fan favorite it does stuff and it, if it gets competitive then holy shit people are gonna be picking it up right this is a really good investment potential just because a voiceless voice again isn't at full power ten dollars it hasn't seen any movement at all like this is a good plateau right here good time to invest in my opinion ten dollars isn't that much either if you're planning to play voiceless voice pick it up now because this is probably gonna be the cheapest you're gonna get it uh, and then we have Vitos or Vitos or whatever that hasn't done anything either. Uh, people are, were expecting this to do stuff. Now, this is a 50-50. I think this is a toss-up. It has low listings. Uh, and it ha so it has some, some potential, right? Because there's people buying it out. But it all depends on what people do with it. I personally don't think people will do anything with it. I, we've had the track record of all TCG exclusive or the world premiere TCG cards sucking ass right the are they, there's two waves of support the first wave gets your hope up the second wave crushes those hopes so in my opinion i wouldn't put too much stock in this and uh get rid of it essentially and then we have the raid raptor stuff holy shit dude we need to talk about raid raptors this card 24 listings and it's probably going to go up more it was a 99 cent card not that long ago and all the raid raptor stuff actually is money right now tribute lanias and i'm sorry i did not make any videos on this i've been watching this behind the scenes and selling some cards uh i've made so much money off the the tribute lanias from ghost from the past if you have this look in your collection and get rid of this yes it has the potential of going up more because it's a very um how it's very i think it's only been printed twice right so it's a scarce three times okay it's scarce scarce and uh yes but there's also a, a new a, this new option here from ots tournament pack 24 it's a common yes but it is a cheaper option as well so i don't know i think like th that's gonna hold the price at bay it'll probably go up to 15 bucks i, I don't doubt it uh, it was at $20 at a point, but I don't like to gamble and stuff like that. And it's probably best to get rid of it now, just in case Raider Raptors don't do anything. The other one was this card from Rise of the Duels, which only has one printing. And that's why I had this crazy ass run up and I got rid of some of the, my copies around 10 bucks as well. Again, if you, if you want more up-to-date stuff, follow me on Twitter. I do try to post more uh, current stuff. Like as, as soon as I see something, I will post it on Twitter. I'm not going to be making videos because I just don't have time. It's easier to just post something on Twitter, right? Besides that, Raid Raptor Force Tricks, three or four copies have been, uh, or printings have been uh, released for this card. And it was a $10 card for the OTS Tournament Pack 14. 
uh, edition. It went down because it got re reprinted in the OTS uh, Pack 24 as a common. So again, uh, in, in all in all, I've actually did buy uh, an OTS Tournament Pack 24 box and will be unboxing that. So stay tuned if you want to see that. I recommend you guys to invest in OTS Herman Pack 24 because in general, it has a lot of decent cards. I mean, Harpy's Feather Duster, Ultimate Rare, Chaos Angel, Ultimate Rare, two out of the three Ultimate Rares are fucking money. Rock of the Va uh, Vanquisher, it's, it's all right, I guess. Like, it's not a terrible card. It's just who is playing Vanquisher, right? Like, ain't nobody playing Vanquisher. Raid Raptors are printed in here, like we've talked about. And there's also Corn Fed, as I like to call him. Corn Fed Kotal is a very expensive, relatively so, super rare. It's a $5 super rare from an OTS pack. You usually get about 10 per box or per 100. So it's it's pretty decent, you know, like 50 bucks if you buy a box. I'm not telling you guys to buy a box, but if you guys do go to OTS stores, try to see if you can get an OTS pack. Because this set, this this pack in particular, is money. We've had a big run up of terrible OTS packs. This one is actually pretty decent. Um, but I think that is it. We've talked about everything. We talked about the Raid Raptors. We've talked about the OTS pack. You bell. There's a lot of interesting stuff. I do think that people, the fire stuff, even though it, we've, we've, we know the stats, right? Fire is tier zero, as people want to want to say, which I guess technically it is, if you want to talk uh, definitions, but it, it doesn't feel that way, right? Stuff, the fire stuff is selling off, and we have a new wave of Raid Raptor, Voiceless Voice, and You Bell that's getting bought out. And that's the stuff you guys should be investing in. The stuff that's already expensive, you should be getting rid of. And the stuff that's cheaper, you should be buying. Anyways, that is the video. Catch you guys in the next one.